Our next speaker, Mike Thiele, is a distinguished engineer at IBM and leads IBM Z mainframe analytics, architecture, and technology. She's also the CTO for Z financial services sector. Mike Thiele has been with IBM over 29 years, working with large enterprise clients in various capacities. Her current responsibilities include working with clients across various industries to help modularize and modernize core systems for agile integration with hybrid cloud and ecosystem partners. She also leads the technical strategy for definition of open source based analytics and cognitive technologies integrated with high value enterprise data and transactional environments. Please join me in welcoming Mike Thiele to the stage. Good morning, I hope you can all hear me. Um, today I'd like to talk to you about the changing forces in the financial services sector and how that's significantly impacting the requirements on the core transactional systems that our enterprise clients rely on to run their business operations and how in-memory compute grids that are efficiently and effectively integrated with the systems of record can offer a significant advantage. We're gonna talk primarily about the financial services industry, although I think you'll see that the themes that we discuss are relevant cross industry. Um, when you look at financial services and banking in particular, there are a number of challenges that our clients are, are dealing with, uh, ranging from competitive pressures, increasing variety and amount of competition, including uh, from non-traditional FIs, which we'll talk about, there's also the uh, pressures around regulatory changes and the changing landscape around those regulatory concerns. Um, of course, there's an ongoing demand for maintaining and growing basic profitability, uh, as well as maintaining business operations, so keeping the environments uh, performing at the right SLAs and then dealing with concerns such as ongoing skill shortages. Now, in the banking industry, digital transformation is seen as the view and the strategy for dealing with these challenges, and it's pretty well accepted across many of our enterprise clients in, in all industries that they're undergoing digital transformation. And in fact, as you can see from the graphic on the right, digital banks are more profitable. They are getting more return on their investments. They are operating at lower costs. They're getting more bang for their buck, if you will, in terms of their, uh, of their infrastructure. However, getting to that point where you have successful digital transformation uh, can be a very long journey, especially for our tier one and tier two banks, and there's a lot of risk involved. So we're gonna look at a couple of the challenges uh, associated with, uh, with the, the transformation around digital strategies, um, and then talk about how those challenges are impacting the core transactional environments that, that our clients are using. So the first thing that we'll talk about is around competition. Our traditional financial institutions are really getting a lot of challenge from non-traditional FIs. So when you think about uh, the, the types of competition that they have, we have IT companies who are now payment processors. We have grocery stores that are offering banking services. We have boutique uh, loan servicing companies that are targeting very small slivers of the population with targeted types of loans that could be very competitive in terms of rates. and They don't have the overhead of having to service a wide variety of clients. So from that perspective, that puts a lot of pressure on the traditional tier one and tier two banks in order to compete. In addition, our expectations of what we, what we expect from our banking institutions has changed quite a bit. Um, and we don't often go into bricks and mortar type environments to bank anymore. We do that from our devices. And regardless of what channel we're using, we expect consistent information, accurate information, uh, if we don't see a transactional update happen right away, we are, we are uh, not patient <laughs> about it. We hit our uh, refresh button on our phones and we wait for that to happen, right? So when you combine all of that, it puts pressure on the underlying core operational systems, both from the perspective of the spiky workloads for inquiries, as well as what our financial institutions have to do to compete. 
One of the ways that they can compete is to leverage the information they have across multiple lines of business about their consumers. So for example, if we bank with, uh, with a particular institution, they may have information and we might have products from them around our core transactions, loans, mortgages, cards. We may be small business owners, they have that information as well, or even investment services. So integrating that information and being much more agile in how quickly they can offer services and products that pull that information together across multiple lines of business can be a significant advantage in terms of meeting that competition. But the underlying systems are often very siloed. They've been built up based on application or they've been built up based on a bank strategy for acquisition. So as a result, often these systems are siloed and not tied together from the perspective of information flow across them. The next challenge I'd like to talk about a little bit is around compliance. Uh, our traditional financial institutions have been dealing with challenges, say, in the money laundering space for some time. But there's also a changing landscape around compliance and regulatory concerns uh, that are trending towards both an increased awareness around privacy and transparency. So if you look at, uh, from a perspective of the European regulations, there's GDPR regulations, as well as open banking for respectively privacy and transparency. Each of those has, uh, has aspects that are actually filtering into uh, the US banks as well. And dealing with the traditional uh, kinds of compliance requirements, as well as these changing requirements, means that our FIs, our financial institutions, really have to leverage a broader ecosystem of fintechs and regtechs to help them amortize that cost. Now that's a very attractive proposition, but the underlying core systems have to be able to interact with those ecosystem partners in a way that, that is through those REST-based APIs, through microservices, uh, and in a way that's modularized. So there's challenges in the existing constructs to allow the quick uh, interaction between ecosystem partners with core systems of record. So as we've discussed some of these capabilities, you can see that there are you know, fundamental technical challenges. Our core operational uh, environments, and as Nikita you know, referred to, these OLTP environments, perform very well. They perform at a very high level of, of throughput, they scale, uh, they, meet, they meet the needs of transaction processing extremely well. And they do have structure, but they have structure that's not necessarily well aligned to the modularity that's needed in today's world in order to integrate with cloud, in order to modernize the underlying structures. Often they haven't been modernized in over 20 years, right? And then there's a need for getting more real-time analytics. We, we heard a discussion around HTAP. So a lot of the high value data that these OLTP environments are producing is often analyzed only in retrospect. So you get that insight after the fact. So there's a lot of technical challenges that exist today. There's also an opportunity, of course, to work with clients to help modularize their environments, find the right uh, granularity points to create those APIs, and introduce a more structured approach to real-time insights. In the banking space, there's an organization, and, and more than one, but one organization in particular, the Banking Industry Architecture Network, or BIAN, has uh, taken a pass at creating a much more structured approach to the architecture recommendations for core banking environments. Uh, at the bottom layer, they talk about the systems of record, which include the transaction processing, you know, mortgages, loans, treasury services, investment services. In the middle layer, they talk about uh, business modular functions, or sometimes it's referred to as a digital agility layer as well. And in that layer, you have capabilities around servicing marketing, um, uh, customer service kinds of engagement driven applications. And in the top layer, what you have are actually the, the channel interactions across a multitude of channels that we all use now to interact with our, with our bank. It, connecting all of that is a fabric around APIs and, and microservices based structures. And of course, the insights and analytics are required across the stack, as is the integration with our ecosystem partners. 
So the value here is in a much more open, modular approach to the structure of banking. Um, it does come with some technical requirements, of course, that we can achieve this while maintaining uh, a high rate of, uh, of scale and performance in our ongoing business operations, that we can do that at the right granularity, and of course, that we can accelerate the digital transformation. So one of the ways that I believe we can really truly accelerate this digital transformation is integrating in-memory compute grids with the systems of record. Um, and in this case, by Compute Grid, it's really a combination of in-memory advanced databases, such as Ignite, combined with a sophisticated data abstraction and virtualization technologies that can access the core data from OLTP systems and do so in a way that's highly performant, do so in a way that does not impact the OLTPs, and be able to actually maintain a, an, a very coherent compute grid. Um, these compute grids are, are, are context specific in this case, so that they actually uh, have different roles based on their instances. You could have a, a compute grid instance that is you know, all transactions per, per account, per client, per product. You could have a whole different instance that's dedicated to aggregating the right set of information for purposes of compliance or regulatory needs. Now, these grids are not just data, right? And then they said data, they're data plus compute, they're data plus processing. Often the raw data that is in the OLTP systems is not at all the data that needs to be surfaced to the other layers. Um, and those other layers are expecting information and there's compute and logic that needs to be applied to that data have it to have any meaning or relevance as that information flows through the stack. The other, the other uh, interesting notion about leveraging compute grid instances in this way is that they can be tailored based on the needs of those business modular functions in the next layer. They can be aligned, they don't have to be one-to-one -one aligned, right? So you can have multiple modular business functions that act, access a given or use a given grid instance and vice versa, one grid instance that's used by many. You can also have these instances used by the internal organizations, as well as have them used by external ecosystem fintechs and regtechs. Uh, defining the right services structure around those grid instances is important. Being able to integrate either through microservices when you need the most agility, or through maybe more integrated techniques like ODBC and JDBC when you need the performance is also valuable. Now, since these grid instances are separated concerns, separated business concerns and have context, uh, you can also put around them the right set of security, the right set of privacy, uh, the right set of uh, access controls. You can even define, in some cases, workload characteristics that define one grid instance as more, more important or a higher priority in service than another and have that managed by advanced workload managers in, within the system. So this concept is really important when you look at the challenges that we discussed earlier, right? It provides a very efficient mechanism to pull together the right set of information across many different OLTP systems, do so in a way that maintains currency and consistency, provides consistent and accurate information regardless of the consumer, do so in a way that doesn't impact the OLTP, and for those spiky workloads that tend to, uh, to um, you know, increase for our financial institutions as the rate of uh, interaction with devices goes up, this kind of a, of a compute grid that's integrated with systems of record can handle some of that spiky workload and take some of the pressure off of the existing OLTPs. So in, in this way, we can really accelerate our clients' digital transformation strategies. It doesn't obviate the need to modularize the core systems or over time modernize them, but it can give clients a way to start down that digital transformation strategy and give them additional flexibility and, and agility uh, to meet, meet the changing needs of our, of our marketplace. Thank you.